Hey everyone, uh, thank you again for joining our new uh, Footprint Data Drive number six, uh, where we're going to be talking about music on chain. Um, and today I have a really special guest. I have Ivan Lin, um, musical prodigy, um, and I just cannot wait um, for him to explain, you know, his musical journey. And then we're going to talk uh, talk about a little bit about why music should go on chain and the benefits of this for not only artists but <clears throat> also the people are, are consumers as well um so with that uh being said i'll give you over the mic to you ivan uh give us a quick introduction about yourself cool cool so um ivan here started as a musician uh played piano when i was a child and got really interested in uh, classical music where i started then uh moved to uh Switzerland and germany when i was quite young and uh Moved over to the states when I, uh, when I was around early twenties and uh, uh, got into something that's different from classical music. And at the time, it was uh, uh, applied music and particularly focusing on video gaming soundtracks. Um, I was the uh, keyboardist uh, at the video game orchestra based in Boston at the time. And trying to figure out a few new ways to be involved uh, in uh, this community. So we got very lucky to have produced uh, the soundtrack for Final Fantasy as our first um, music project at the time. It was back then, uh, 2012, 2013. Uh, what Final and, Fantasy uh, uh, what did you make, or did you make a couple of them? Uh, for hello, the music hello. Hey, hey, Ivan. Uh, so music wise, uh, did you just do one Final Fantasy game, or did you do a couple of them? Oh, we did. From uh, Final thirteen all the way to uh, fifteen, and right now it's in the production for sixteen. So, uh, started again as the uh, pianist and keyboardist recording for the composer, then later got into the music production. Uh, so pretty much switching from in the recording stage as a pianist to be in the control room of uh, producing the um, the music and uh, arranging music composition all together. And that that was for Final Fantasy. Followed by um, a little more projects, including like Kingdom Hearts, um, uh, Legend of Zelda, and more recently, as you know, um, became a music director of Assassin's Creed and also the Concert Tour. So, you know, I, I know you probably don't, but I gotta ask which soundtrack is your favorite one so far? Or is do you well, have a favorite? I, well, you know, that. Yeah. My God, that's a tough question because it's hot. Uh, and it's, it's all a like different genre. Like some of them are more like orchestra, epic, uh, uh, that kind of like John Williams, Hans Zimmer vibe. But you know, a lot of a lot of ones you you would call it like more of uh, softer, smaller, but really sweeter. Like um, uh, there's one this piano solo Susanna come from Benefit Ten. That was uh, one of my uh, favorite, and of course Somnus from a Benefit Fifteen. And also Azio family from uh, uh, Assassin's Creed, and it was quite a privilege to uh, directly work with um, those composers because you get to uh, be uh, having this live communications uh, directly with them, working on the uh, uh, alternation and also a little bit of development when the music is being created. So it's like a quite a great experience um, uh, at the time. Oh, absolutely. Um, so now, Ivan, how did you go from comp composing these amazing video games um, to getting interested in NFTs? Um, what what brought you into Web three? Well, you see, so uh, when I, when I was uh, in the business of music production, so we started to be involved in uh, music distribution as well. Like uh, it's it's pretty much how to get a mess stream over to. Every one of us, like how we'll be able to to listen to those great pieces of music. So, uh, distribution part plays a, a a big role. It's about like um, working with publishers, um, distributors, uh, royalties, and uh, when I was working on all of these processes as a music creator and also the producer, I started to become actually quite frustrated and disappointed. Uh, meaning. It, it, the, the process is so complicated, and you've got to go through a lot of steps uh, going forward, working with different agents, working with different uh, uh, offices. So 
um, naturally, I wanted to start looking into something that's like uh, solving this problem where all the process can be simplified. So that's why uh, at the time, coincidentally, uh, quite a few friends started to get into blockchain. And uh, at the time, NFT was only about to, to get started. Like only very few people would know what uh, NFT is and certain there's no like new NFT. So it's pretty much a, 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 it's a quite new, new thing. So um, having been uh, doing quite a bit of research and also experiment on a few projects and as well as uh, uh, communicating with uh, music creators, it, it, the picture becomes quite clear that maybe it's the way and one of the solutions that we can look into in terms of making the uh, process much simpler and uh, to benefit and empower artists. So that becomes quite a big interest uh, in what we're doing right now. So um, yeah, yeah. as you know, there's a lot of like uh, experiments going on. So um, I'm trying a few different things to get moving, uh, get this moving forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, my question is, you know, what ways can you know, the blockchain really empower these artists besides, you know, uh, reducing the steps and all of the bureau bureau bureaucratical red tape uh that you have to get through uh in distribution is there any other ways uh really that bringing uh, mm -hmm. these uh songs or whole albums on chain can benefit uh, artists right i i think if you look into the variation of rights like there's this copyright there's a performing rights live rights recording rights and all kinds of rights so it's a lot of layers uh for one single mastering. So um, artists, as a result, sign different contracts. They have to go through different kinds of middlemen. And uh, they started to sacrifice and also lose control of their revenue, uh, copyright, and the person is like losing. So um, one of the ideas that uh, now we talk about smart contract, which will be able to handle different rights and uh, uh, all the transactions and uh, the way the music is being certified can be transparent and public so that, uh, and also immutable. So it, it becomes quite a proof that actually artists will be able to have more control when it comes to uh, distributing their music publicly. There's a better way, certified way that they can always have that uh, on the track and record. You know, I, I think that's, the, for me, the most exciting part. I always hear about, you know, record labels, um, you know, really taking everything from the artists themselves and then really just getting a super small piece of the pie. So uh, I'm all about empowering right. the artists and I'm, I'm, this is super exciting. And I guess you're working on uh, on a product right now to help do that if you uh, want to give a quick shout out on what you're doing. Right. So uh, I'm a huge believer that uh, technology and art or entertainment, uh, they, 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 they come uh, hand in hand. So we created and founded uh, Wave, which is a way for music uh platform because we believe this should be the way to empower artists uh, by providing a much easier to access and uh, a friendlier way for music creators to actually get their music um, out there without going through so many like uh, complicated uh, uh, contracts. So for the consumer side, uh, Wave is like a streaming platform. It's right now online. So, uh, Wave.app, W-A-V-V.app. You guys are happy to uh, check out. Right now it's a public testnet for artists. But the back end is about the music infrastructure for distribution, where music creators will be able to host their music directly onto the platform without it oh, uh, going through like working with uh, distributors, whether it's a big distributor or a small distributor. So uh, it's uh, so uh, you'll be able to get your music out there right away. So right now we do have like platform like YouTube, right? You have videos in your phone, and you upload and distribute your video right away. But for music, it's very hard to do that uh, nowadays, even in 2023. You're not able to do that for Spotify. You're not able to do that for Apple, Apple Music. You have to work with uh, distributors to get on, on there. And when you work with them, you started to uh, give out uh, your revenue, your copyright. So it's a little bit like, it's actually more than a little a sacrifice that music creators will have to, to work when they put their music out there. So we wanted to simplify the process of uh, using my contract on the chain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you know for for you've uh, you talk to a ton of artists. You're surrounded by artists all the time. Now, what have you noticed is like the uh, the biggest hurdle 
um, to get uh, artists interested in bringing their music on chain? You know, is it the lack of education? What are what are some things that are uh, that you know need to be fixed going forward to make this more of an open idea for all artists? Right, it's a good question. I think uh, right now we look at the uh, the camera of Web three. It's, it, it, it's simply uh, we 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 keep the gate closed a little too much, like. Uh, if you create a music product and you ask artists to come in to use your product and the first step is to ask them to connect a wallet, it's going to scare them away. So I don't think in terms of UI and UX, this experience is not yet very friendly for uh, music creators because they are really good at creating uh, great music, but not necessarily uh, like doing the back end and logistics afterwards. So um, I don't think in terms of like Web 2 and Web 3, especially like most of the music creators are in uh, Web2 right now, uh, it, it needs some like much friendlier user experience and user interface that they will be able to be connected to the world Web3. And also it's lack of sec security and also just as said education. Um, you know, the curiosity is huge within the music community. They always want to try something that's new. And especially like uh, for the majority of music creators, they are usually uh, financially suffering and they spend hours and hours creating music, but uh, their work doesn't get enough of uh, exposure. So uh, they're always keen to look out for a new product to try a little bit. It's, it, the, the, the thing is that we need to make this easier to, to use and friendlier to use so that uh, this can be a much smoother process for them to uh, post music on a, a plug like wave. Yeah, I, you know, I think you're, you've definitely hit the nail on the head there. It's 100%, you know, um, it's all about getting people to not know really that they're connecting with a wallet at first, right? Let's get, let's get people, I'm a big believer in getting people onboarded, um, just, just by getting them there. We don't have, don't even worry about the wallet yet. If they want to get into the Web3 side of things later, um, you know, they're fine with that. As long as we got it on chain and they're happy and everyone's happy, but they don't know, whatever, right? As long as they're happy and it's easy. Right. Um, now, I'm also, everybody that's listening, if you go into the community chat here, I know uh, you don't have the most amount of time today, Ivan. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat in the community call. Um, we'd love to hear what you're thinking. Um, now, Ivan, realistically speaking, you know, in 2023, you know, we're kind of seeing, um, well, 2022, we hit a huge bear market, especially when it came to NFTs. Right. Now, are you, do you think we're going to see um, music NFTs become a thing on, say, marketplaces like Blur? Do you know much about Blur? Have you seen Blur? Right, right. It's and right. where we well, come? I do think that's a huge potential. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we look at, at music NFTs or NFT collections, uh, like right now it's a, 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 a lot of other democratizing ownership, but I think the most important thing going forward to look at would be what's the utility, what's the like the features after you own such music NFTs. It's about you owning the collection where there's a lot like uh, fame-based or NFT-gated uh, events, clubhouse or franchise that can be part of, that can be uh, uh, utilized. So this is something that's a little lacking right now. We've been talking about like fractional copyright for music creators, and we've been talking about uh, using NFT as the way to uh, build a fan club and uh, clubhouse. I think the most important part is that what can be, uh, what we'll be able to benefit music creators part of the tokenomics, where uh, after you own an NFT, are you going to be the VIP? You were be able to always be the first one to get the uh, concert tickets or if you get to actually communicate with the artist uh, directly like all those it, it, it so to, very frankly from from seeing right now music NFTs and this kind of it's kind of a strategy in a way it hasn't even started for the music community so it's we're, we're in a really early stage which creates a lot of opportunities going forward but we've got to do it right and do it like easier to use right and is uh... So, to do you see do you see um, music NFTs also um, helping eliminate the problem that is Ticketmaster and their enorm or their yeah I guess substantial enormous fees that you have to pay um, just to just to see your favorite artists. I mean, for some examples, uh, you know, we saw Taylor Swift concert tickets going for like you know, or even be uh, Beyonce is coming to Vancouver and her tickets are twelve thousand bucks to go on the floor that's crazy right. so do you see um this also being a and you know i i don't a ton of artists don't like that as well so do you see this also being a solution for that yes when you look 
at like uh, ticketing and concept tickets is another chapter of the story, right? Uh, if you look at the uh, the fee you have to pay through the middleman, you're going to be really surprised. Sometimes, I, I mean, if you're lucky, you pay as little as five bucks, but sometimes the concert fee can go up to 35, 65 uh, bucks. And not even mentioning when it's being sold uh, in the second market. So, um, um, for, 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 for that problem, in order to in order to solve an entity probably would be another solution that we can look into. And it's about providing a transparent environment where we know that there's no hidden fee. We know where the money is going to. And we know that uh, this is to create a friendlier place for the fans, for those creators. So that's something that we can also look into. You know, this is like the entire head to toe uh, service to look at. It's uh, online events, online campaign and offline concerts. And music is the way, it's the global language that you can communicate with everyone. So these are like really exciting to, to, to move forward. Yeah, you know what? I'm also very excited about artists giving me some airdrops, Ivan. You, that would get me fired up. I'm telling you, with Perov Stellar or Drake, uh, they just, as they airdrop me a song, I would lose my mind. I think I would lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly exactly this <laughs> you know it gives me it, it, give, it really helps you feel connected on that more personal level with the artist as well right you really uh, as a fan you really if you're starting to get airdrops from your artist i, I would make me feel like amazing right that's so sick um yeah. Uh, what about you? Have you have you experimented with doing any airdrops for any of your shows? I know you've uh, been doing a couple yeah, of course. It short. It actually shortens uh, the distance between uh, music talent and the audience, and I think that's something that you wouldn't be able to get uh, uh, before. That you'd be able to receive uh, a gift or a souvenir or something that's valuable directly from your from your uh, superstar, and uh, this is actually creating a community-driven vibe where you are much closer to uh, the artist that. Um, you love. So I, I think going forward, um, we all know that um, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it's about the, the large companies, the labels, uh, they will be able to uh, have this um, pipeline that uh, fans cannot be uh, directly communicated uh, with uh, their, their artists. But this is changing right now. The distance is like much shorter. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you know, I, I, I think soon as the education is there, it's going to really be a no-brainer for a lot of artists to switch. I mean, especially right now, uh, we did our event with Link 3. I mean, I, I see so many uh, possibilities with uh, music NFTs and decentralized social medias. It's uh, I really think it's going to be something uh, going from 2023, 2024 even. I think we're going to see a lot of innovation and a lot of big steps coming here. Um I guess with that exactly. being said, though, mm -hmm. Ivan, uh, we got to wrap it up here. You got to go. Um, I'm taking questions for one more minute, you guys. Um, so if you guys got questions, uh, please drop them now uh, in the community sharing chat. And uh, I guess I'll leave it with Ivan. Are you going to GDC at all? Are you going to check it out? Well, so I was at GDC literally this afternoon. Uh, met a bunch of great uh, new friends and meeting uh, old friends. It's it, you, you see, this is a great community. And, and, and you see Web3, actually, it's like more than 50% of the, uh, the booths. It's about uh, blockchain gaming. So you see, this is the vibe of also like people can get a little confused about like why blockchain is connected to uh, gaming and what is GameFi. But you see this like the education process where uh, we all are getting into the new and the new uh, environment where this is something newer. And we're really excited about that. Great, and I'm super excited about it as well. You know, I love gaming. And But with that, I guess we'll wrap it up here, Ivan. I know you got to go. Um, so thank you so much again for joining us. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Um, and, uh, you know, I really hope they get to see you soon. And if you have any final thoughts you want to say, either about Wave or Music on Chain, uh, now's the time. Right, so sorry about that, because like we've got a bunch of uh, producers from Lucas been waiting for us. <laughs> I've got to wrap up, but uh, I think uh, that the mindset is that we got to keep, keep it open. And uh, we're in uh, another crossroad where we're looking at frontier technology and something that's new 
not necessarily familiar, but like it's it's it's, it's like the the new thing's gonna happen. So uh, keep open minded and always uh, learn and uh, try to contribute to community what we need. And for us, that's music because we all love uh, uh, music. So check out Wave. We're looking for artists. Please uh, send artists to us. We want to work with all of them. Sweet. So you heard the man. If you're an artist. Get in Ivan's DMs. We want to get you on Wave. And with that being said, you guys, we're wrapping up our Footprint Data Drive number six. I want to thank you guys all for listening again. And um, I'll see you next week. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about more about uh, Web3 Gaming. Um, so, Ivan, thanks again for joining. And everyone else, ciao for now. Thank you.